Another person speaking out is retired General Jerry Boykin. i Mark Martin spoke with him about Mater's situation and what the outcome could mean for the military and the nation. Welcome, General Boykin. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be with you. Chaplain Motter has earned high praise from past Marine and SEAL commanders. Tell us a little bit about his background. Well, he has a very good record. He spent four years actually as an, uh, an enlisted man in the Marine Corps, uh, got out of the Marine Corps and uh, went through seminary with the Assemblies of God and uh, was ordained. And he now has uh, uh, 15 years as a Navy chaplain. What has he said to have done wrong? Well, you need to understand, first of all, that this was a complete setup. Uh, now, what he is accused of is being uh, insensitive, of not uh, being sensitive enough about the feelings of uh, members of the Navy. Here's the truth about what happened. A young officer from the Naval Academy who had finished his initial training and placed in the chaplain's office for temporary duty until they could move him to his first assignment. He went in and asked the chaplain repeatedly for uh, his views on homosexuality, on same-sex marriage. The chaplain did not know at the time that this young man was a homosexual and was married to a man. Ultimately, this young man came in and filed charges against the chaplain for being insensitive. Now, keep in mind, this was one-on-one -on -one personal counseling that the chaplain was doing with him. And when the young man asked him questions about uh, homosexuality, the chaplain gave him biblical answers, answers that reflected his faith and his understanding of the Word of God. So when this man turned on the chaplain, uh, filed charges against him, they relieved the chaplain of all duties. This is an absolute assault on that chaplain's religious liberties under the First Amendment. That's why we're fighting against this. Are not chaplains allowed to express their biblical held beliefs? Chaplains are. In fact, uh, there are Navy regulations that protect a chaplain's uh, right to be able to express his religious beliefs. Now, keep in mind, what happened to this chaplain was in private counseling sessions. This was not a matter of this chaplain even standing up in the pulpit and preaching about his views on homosexuality. It was about private counseling sessions. It was a setup. I'll ask this to, to your uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, does it make you feel good to know that that's what our Navy has now for young leaders, for young officers that are going to lead your sons and daughters? Uh, an officer whose first act in the Navy is to go after a chaplain with 19 years of honorable service because of his biblical views. Does that make us, any of us feel good about the future leadership in our Navy? It doesn't, doesn't make me feel good. General Boykin, it seems the military in general is becoming more hostile to its members expressing religious beliefs. Why is that? What's going on here? You know, a lot of people don't understand that uh, America as a whole is moving uh, away from our founding principles. America as a whole is moving in the direction of secularism. Now, what's at the root of that? What I would say to you is what's at the root of that is Marxism. Uh, we are becoming a Marxist nation. Uh, Karl Marx said, my objective is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. He also said, Religion is the opiate of the masses. Our founding fathers gave us two unique principles, consent of the governed and unalienable rights. You cannot have a Marxist nation if the population believes that their rights come from God and not from man or from government. Therefore, you have to remove this idea of unalienable rights from the public square. You can't do that as long as you have an institution called the U.S. military that believes very much in the founding principles, that is still very conservative in terms of their views of what the Constitution provides. So you go after the military. If once you destroy religion, once you destroy the Judeo-Christian ethic in the church, I mean in the military, then it's easy enough to do the same thing with the rest of society. What is the impact of all of this on our servicemen and women? 
we're losing a lot of very good people, good professional people that just, they've, they've had as much as they can take and they see the handwriting on the wall and they are walking. The other impact is that it's hurting recruiting. I talk to moms and dads across the country, everywhere I speak, and uh, there is a great reluctance to allow sons and daughters now to join our military. And it's because of this attack on their faith. They don't want their son or daughter to have to check their faith at the door by going into the military. What can be done to turn all this around? Well, the average Christian has to get uh, involved in this. And I don't mean just pastors. I don't mean just spiritual leaders. I mean the average Christian has to get involved in this. And the way you get involved in it is you uh, contact your member of Congress and you let them know that you want uh, legislation that protects the rights of uh, young men and women in our military. Uh, you, have to, you have to let them know by email. You have to let them know by phone calls. Uh, the other thing is uh, when petitions go around from organizations like the Family Research Council, you need to sign them. We have, a, we have about 100,000 signatures right now uh, on a petition that we've sent around on Chaplain West Motter, but we need a million. And uh, we shouldn't be able to do that, given the number of Christians that are in this country. And you got to get you got to get involved in this process because this is about the future of America. It's not just about the military. All right, General Jerry Boykin, thanks for joining us, sir. We appreciate your time and your service. Thank you very much.